Hello, John again. And here we are on a, with another 6502 tutorial. This time we're going to do a uh, deep dive into the load command, the store command, and the add with carry. Um, these are the three most common commands that you will probably use within a 6502 program. So I thought I would just do a, a tutorial, small tutorial on uh, these three commands. So we'll start with the first one, which is the load, the load command. Now, this is load the accumulator command, uh, instruction, which allows you to take a number and load it into the accumulator, or take a memory location and then load that into accumulator. There is also load X and load Y, and each one has the same philosophy, where you're to taking, you're loading the X register with a number or a memory location, and you're loading the Y register with a number and or a memory location. And the difference between the X and the Y register loads is that uh, the X register can't index using itself, so it can only index by Y, and vice versa with the Y register. You can't index on Y, you can only index on X. So some of the addressing modes are missing on the LDX and LDY. But when you do a load, and you take the memory or the number specified into the accumulator or the registers, depending on which instruction you've used, it affects the zero flag and the negative flag which basically says has the has the number been loaded a negative number in two's complement or does it equal to zero or not and they're the only two statuses that are actually affected using this command and so you can do quick tests on the number that you're loading so if you're using two's complement to define uh, the positive and negative number you can check whether you've got a negative number that's just loaded in just by checking the, just by using the branch if negative, negative uh, command or you can check to see if it's a zero or not and if it's a zero you can use branch if, uh, branch if equal All right. the next command is the store command now the store command is exactly the same as the load but it does it in reverse so you're taking what you've got in your accumulator or X and Y register and you are storing it into memory and like the load, if you use the STX and STY, you can only index on the opposite register. So XTX can only index on Y, and y, STY can only index on X. So some of the addressing modes will change for the store X and store Y if you're uh, using them. When you store the accumulator or the contents, it has no effect the status register ch does not get modified in any way. So even if you store a zero, the zero flag is not set. If you store a negative number, the negative flag is not set. So when you store, it does not affect the status register at all. So you can't do any tests after you've done a store. You have to do those tests before. And the last one is add with carry. And as I've explained on, the, on our previous video, it's basically taking the accumulator adding some memory or number and then adding the carry and, and then stores it back into the accumulator and if we've added a number together and it's bigger than 256 it stores a one in the carry so an example of these this this uh, these instructions is here and we are going to use the Fibonacci series example to utilize the store and load and the add to its max yeah now the Fibonacci series basically allows you to add for your previous result to the new result and then your new result becomes the new previous result and then you slowly add up so as you can see from the flowchart we start with the current result the current number being one and then the previous number being naught and the new number being not so we've just initialized it so we display the current number yeah and then we add the current number and the previous number so to start with it would be 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 and we store that into the new number we transfer the 
current number, which is 1, into previous, so that becomes 1, and then we transfer the new number into the current. So the new number would be 1, transferred into the current. Is the current bigger than 256? No, it isn't. Go around and display the current number. So we'll end up with 0, then 1, and then we do the same thing again. So we add the current and previous. Now this time, the current number is 1, the previous number is 1, which gives us a new number of 2. And so we transfer them around again, go round if it's not 256 or above, and display it. So effectively, we're doing this here, and this is what the end result will be. So we're saying 0, 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. Then 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, five uh, 3 plus 5 is equal to 8, 5 plus 8 is equal to 13, 8 plus 13 is equal to 21, 21 um, 13 plus 21 is equal to 34, 21 and 34 is 55, 34 and 55 is 89, 55 and 89 is 144, 89 and 144 is 233, 144 and 233 is 377, but we'll not get a number because that's bigger than 256. And this is what is commonly known as the Fibonacci series. It's very difficult to say that word. And so, I have written a routine that allows us to see this in 6502. So here we are, uh, tutorial 10. So we do the standard stuff, which is the sys. Um, and we're doing, we got jump into 0900 as usual, but then we jump into the Fibonacci routine. So if I scroll down, you'll see that I've got the standard to the include files for the for tutorials. And I've created some variables. So I've got current value, which is in basic would be y previous value in basic would have been x and the new value in basic would have been z. I have some start text which just says Fibonacci series and that's just the title and then we've got the code that does it. So as you can see first lines I'm loading x with the absolute number 0 so I'm loading the x register with the number 0 and then I'm storing it in the previous value and the new value then I'm increasing x by 1 to make it 1 and the reason why I'm doing increase x is because I could have done load x with the number 1 but that takes two uh, clock cycles but doing an increase x only takes 1 so we're saving computer time and so in this particular instance we, we, it's more efficient just to increase x by 1 and then store it in the current value y. Then we print out the start text title. Then we load the accumulator with naught because we're only dealing with the uh, eight bit numbers, so this is the high bit. And then we load the low bit, which is previous value or x, and then we print out that number. And here is now where we start the looping. So we create print carriage return to start a new line load the high byte with naught, load the low byte which is the current value y, print the number out. Then we load the previous value x, clear the carry because we've got we don't want to add an, a, a, a spurious one to the the number. Add the current value to the previous value and then store that number into the new value. So it's basically z equals x plus y. Then we take the current value y and store it in the x value, which is effectively doing x equals y. And then load the y value, uh, the z value, and then store that into the y value, which is effectively y equals z in basic. And that because we've added with carry here, and we know that the store command and the load command do not affect the carry flag whatsoever. So we know that when we do the branch if carry clear, we are, we are confident enough to know that that carry flag hasn't been changed 
because of these state these uh, instructions so if the if the carry is clear which means that we haven't crossed the 256 mark then we look loop back and do the whole thing again if the carry is set then that branch won't fire and the carry is set because we've gone bigger than 256 we then add a carriage return and then jump back to basic so if we run this you'll see how we should have the same numbers as I displayed before and there you go so there's the, the title of Fibonacci series it starts off with 0 then does 1 1 so 0 plus 1 is equals 1 1 plus 1 equals 2 3 5 8 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233. And then it's come out because the fact that we've crossed that page boundary. And I can do that again. Get exactly the same numbers. So that is load and store mainly with add with carry just to do the add in this tutorial. So I hope that this has been informative. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. If you'd like to make a comment, please add a comment. Both good and bad, I will try and uh, reply to comments as quickly as I can. If you like the video, click like, and I will see you in the next tutorial. See you later. Bye.